welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're always glad for people like you, people that are interested in the issues happening in our cities. It is good government to have the city council, the mayors, the city staff, and the residents all come talking together about the issues that need dealing with. So we're glad that you're with us tonight. Now one of the ongoing issues that all of our cities deal with every year is the city budget. And it's a fairly long and complicated process, but it is one that if you're particularly interested in that issue, you can dip into it and find out information during the year. During the first part of the year, the city manager or administrator and the city department heads will all be working on what should go into that budget. And then all of those department areas will more than likely bring their information to the city council and talk back and forth. And by the time they get to the fall, they have to set a number that can be lowered, but it can't be hired for your tax levy and finish off determining exactly what the budget is going to include. So we'll have a program tonight that'll listen to people from several different cities talking about their budget process and what's happening. But we do encourage you that you can always see the, the budget for the current year on your city's website. And then you can also check with your city about attending the work sessions when they're going over the information if you want to dig into it a little deeper. So we're very glad to have you with us tonight and we'll encourage you to contact your city council and your city mayor if you have questions about any particular areas. Now on to our guests. How does your council decide on what goals or priorities or what are you going to focus on during 2019? That's a very good question. At the beginning of every new term uh -huh. and a new year, we meet early in January okay. to discuss our legislative priorities. And in that uh, study session, we come up with what, uh -huh. what things are important to, to all of us. Right. And that's kind of a very interesting meeting uh -huh. because we are, have very different ideas. Right. But at the end of the day, we come together and we say, okay, what is really the most important uh -huh. for Plymouth? And this year we had a few legislative priorities uh -huh. uh, in regards to getting funding, of course. Oh, right. Isn't that what right. it's all about? Oh, getting definitely. Getting funding for the major priorities right. that we have, a lot of which are transportation uh -huh. related. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have your own bus system, right? We do run our own bus system. It's very efficient. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's that's Plymouth Link. Right. And that's, uh, like I said, it's sort of a wonderful pass-through uh, dollars go into that. Right. And it's very efficient. We have a lot of compliments on our mm -hmm. transport system. But we don't have any uh, major transit uh, corridors. Uh, yeah, there's Plymouth. nothing to go s across the uh, west to east. No. You can get downtown. No. And get back. Right? That's but, about it. Yeah. That's about it, yeah. So that's so just the way it is. That's an area that probably needs work and will do, but things, like you said, don't happen very fast necessarily. Well, one road, uh, Highway 55, is running out at a uh -huh. diagonal. So right. if there were some area where something, some transit-related project would be uh, appropriate, that would probably be the one because it runs diagonally through right. the city of Plymouth. Yeah, that's true. Out to right, you know, out to right. out that way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, Crystal City Council is working to de develop fiscally sound financial policies. Yep. And now we'll take that big long term with that sounds sort of bookish, right? It doesn't really uh -huh. say. It much. doesn't excite much. Doesn't, doesn't, to doesn't, say what does it really mean yeah, and what, what you're what doing really in the mean? changes. So now you you've moved to a debt free policy. Tell us what it means for the city and why you made that change. Okay. So. Uh, where do you start? Um, we want it to be debt free because when we work on uh, capital projects, whether it be buildings, roads, mm -hmm. uh, even equipment, if we're using bonding or debt to right. do that, we're paying more for that project. Now, when we, when we take a big look at Crystal, um, Crystal 
relies heavily on local government aid. Mm -hmm. They also rely very heavily on fiscal disparities. Oh, right. um, to try to simplify that, what that means is uh, without that, we're not making it. Uh -huh. So we're not, a, we're not a city, you talked about cities development in the outer oh, areas, right. they're developing, right. we're fully developed. We mm -hmm. don't have the opportunity to grow into debt. Right. So we're going to feel it a lot faster when we start taking on debt because uh -huh. it's going to dig in to what we could be spending on design, what we could be spending on, spending on equipment, what we could be spending on mortar and, and, and bricks, what have you. So it really takes a bite out of what sure. we can do, and, and that's why we're doing it. Uh, but there's a lot more to it than that. It's not about necessarily being debt-free. Okay. It's about why do we want to be debt-free? Ah. Well, if, if we're debt-free, we're not, the obvious one is we're not sending that money to the bank. Right. But if there's an economic down cycle uh, for, for, from a city perspective, we're able to handle that because we're not, oh, we're not, sure. we're not able, we're not having to, to rely on getting that, that debt. Um, interest rates, if mm -hmm. interest rates go up. Oh, right. If we're not relying on debt, well, we don't care. I don't care if it's 12% interest, if we're not reliant upon mm -hmm. it. Uh, we really believe that the interest rates are going to go up in uh -huh. the next, uh, well, few years. Right. I mean, we've seen a little bit already. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's gonna continue, so that just becomes a larger part of what we, we have to you know give away out of the the citizens uh, money that we right. collect and you know there's there's something from my perspective I don't want to ask citizens to pay for this 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 and oh by the way this chunk that's going to go to the banks mm -hmm. I don't think that's a good steward of 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 money uh, we need to use that money for everything that we're supposed to we're supposed to supply so Let's use it for what it's meant for, not for, not for banks. I mean, and there's a lot of big bank buildings, and oh. we know why they're there. Right. So we send all our money to them. <laughs> so that's a big piece of it. So that must have taken a lot of discussion between city staff and city council people, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, we've been doing this for three and a half years. Uh -huh. uh, we just had a visioning session. Oh, boy, it's been about a month now. And, you know, what the council says is we like the direction we're going. Mm -hmm. uh, we consider it one of our strengths. We're going to continue to work on it. Um, but as we go through these conversations, there are still people on the council, there's still staff members that, that have to own it and understand it at a deeper oh, right, level. Right. Because this is very counter-cultural. Right. I mean, we in our private lives, it's normal to have uh, like a house loan, a car loan, student loan, possibly medical loans, right, all right, that stuff. Right. And, and, and another reason for being debt free is so you can reserve that discretionary income. If we buy all those things as individuals, you know, house, car, all that, uh -huh. thing, at the end of the day, we don't have any money left yeah. over because we've got right. all these payments to make. Well, it's no different for a city if we have uh, something on the community center, something over here on a, a, cub, a cub development or um, uh, affordable housing development mm -hmm. that we've you know, put our resources into, uh, at the end of the day, when we need to do something, we're gonna be handcuffed. We're not gonna be able to, to um, have those funds available uh -huh. from the savings for these different things. That's another great thing is when you're saving for something, you have a little bit of money in, in these accounts that right. for whatever you're saving for. And if something doesn't quite match with your planning and it's just off a little bit, you used to have a little bit of agility, fi ah. I call that financial agility, right. to, to you know borrow for a year or two from sure. one of these other funds. Um, we don't literally borrow it right. any longer. I think we used to do that. <laughs> but um, it's, 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 it's now a lot simpler. You just, following years, you fund it properly, you deal with it, the money's there. We don't have to do assessments, we don't have to do bonding, there's no surprises, there's no heavy, heavy uh, economic burden on the citizens. Again, citizen perspective. Oh, right. Um, and, and that's the biggest part about this is uh, being stewards of, 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 of who sent us here. Well, I had heard somebody say once, I thought it was wise, people complain about taxes, but really what they want to do is know that you spent it wisely. Yes. So is if, if you're spending it wisely, you won't have a huge amount of citizens correct, that are disturbed. Correct. Yeah, that's and true. And then, of course, then they ha have to learn about how you're doing it. And right. Now, 
if you if you started it three years ago, you must just be in the beginning stages of getting ready, right? <laughs> We're barely started. Okay. Uh, but a lot has happened too. I uh -huh. mean, uh, which way is it, Jim? Um, you know, we've changed our our budgeting cycle to a two-year budgeting cycle. Right. Well, that's designed specifically so that we have an extra, we have a year where we can focus on long-term uh -huh. planning and then figuring out how to fund that plan, whether it's going to be a levy increase, whether it's going to be a utility fee increase, right. or if it's going to be a cut in one area of the budget and applying it to, to the shortfalls. Because there are different areas that when you project it out long-term, we're going to be in trouble, which yeah. is that's the type of thing that forces us to borrow money oh, and forces right, us right. to take out these these bonds or these loans. Um, so that's what we're trying to trying to avoid. And um, right now, uh, we've seen a decrease in our funds because um, we're transitioning from right. debt to savings. Yeah. So we're in the next couple of years, you're going to start seeing those those fund accounts increasing more right. and more and more. And that gives us the ability to not even have to rely on any contingent funds in our operating budget. You know, we have we have almost 50. Well, I think it's 45 percent of our operating budget is uh, is required to be on hand per year uh -huh. in case of emergencies. Well, if we have these funds going up, there's no way we're ever going to touch that. Yeah. You know, that gives us a, a great sense of security for economic downturns, oh, right. uh, unforeseen things. Uh, if something happens to LG at the legislative level, oh, right. well, and, oh and boy, all, we're in trouble. And all of our cities have experienced that over the last 10 to 50 yeah. years. The ups and the early, downs. Early 2000s, so. we had dramatic right. cuts in our LGA. What happened? We cut people, we cut services. Yeah. Being debt free is going to help us with that as we get increasing funding inside of these designated areas so that we have the agility to, to roll with those kind of punches. So yeah, big deal. And then you just mentioned that you're on a biannual two-year budget. Yes. And this is the first year you, you're this doing is, that? We're in year two. This is oh. our first planning year. Okay. Um, uh, so talk wait. a little bit about the two years so and what you do. Last year we did the budget for 2019. Um, so now in 2019 we won't have to do much planning for uh, mm -hmm. 2020 because right. we've got an estimated what that will already look like. Now that said it's going to take a couple cycles for us to make the full oh, transition right, right because i'm thinking if we have time to look at our long-term planning we're going to go ah this is a high priority uh -huh. and those numbers might move a little bit oh, more than sure. what we were hoping sure but i'm thinking by second cycle third cycle mm -hmm. you're going to see uh the forecast of that second year be more accurate so we'll see it's i i'm excited to see how right. it works out now if crystal has resident Crystal residents have questions about the budget. I also found uh, someone for them to contact. They can always contact you. Yep, right? Please call me. I'd love to and, talk to about but that. The person at City Hall, Jean McGann. Yes. And I'll put up her phone number and, and, yep. uh, and her email so they have someone to talk about. And then your budget is online on your website. I believe it is, yes. So if people have questions about what you've been doing, because the budgeting process just kind of ended in December, right? And so right. now you're back right. into the... Well, we're not. I mean, we're in the planning cycle. Right, now you're but in the planning. But other, other right. cities are starting to gear right. up for the next year's right. budget. We want to use this time to, to plan. Yeah. Now, and that gives you time. Right. Now, Jean McGann is a uh, financial director for many, many different cities. Oh, okay. She's, she, we contract out that. Okay. If you want specifics relating to... Uh, what the debt free piece is, why we're doing that. Come to me on oh, that. Oh, okay, then because I'll I think, put your phone number up yeah. here. Right. The dirt right. move. Well, I wanted to have you talk just briefly about the 2020 budget planning process yep. because it's already getting underway yes. in all of our cities. And what kind of, if you can kind of talk about the priorities for the budget that just got approved in December. Mm -hmm and about maybe any changes or differences you see coming up in the one you're going to work on this year? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge, and it's, it's just a challenge. Most of the cities in Northwest, not all, I think Plymouth, uh -huh. very less so, but still, we're heavy on residential. Right. Which means our property taxes tend to come out of people's houses. They're very definitely. Not corporations, right. right? So you want to have a balance. So that's mm -hmm. one of the things our development goals is to get oh, more businesses in. Oh, sure. 
um, because people own houses, that doesn't mean they have a job. They yeah. can be retired. Yeah. Lots of things. So, and the, in Minnesota, your share of the pie, that is your budget, determine the value of the house. So if your oh, house right. goes up 25%, yeah. your taxes are going up. Right. Now, let's say, I always help you. And your income might not have gone up. <laughs> we could have froze spending, spent no more money yeah. than we did last year. Yeah. But the fact that the house's average went up 10, and yours went up 20, you yeah. will pay more. Right. So I always tell people, whatever the average rate right. increase, if you're above it, you're going to pay more. If you're right. below it, so you, we could increase spending, you could pay less in taxes. Right, right. And that doesn't make people happy, but it, <laughs> right, I just right. try to get them to understand. Well, to understand how the process works, that's well, important. I think the other part is people, um, myself, everyone, we think, oh my God, you know, let's cut this $250,000, that's going to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. We figured that $250,000 is $1 a month to the average medium value home. <laughs> wow. So 12 bucks a year. Now, yeah, I'm not yeah, saying that's not important, yeah. no, but no, I always no. like put perspective right, because right. if I cut a million, I save you four bucks a month. Yeah. Now, if your house went up 25% versus an average yeah. tenant, you won't even see that $4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the big thing is we know we have to try to live as much within right. our means. Uh, we also understand that 76% of our budget is employees, oh, right. healthcare and benefits. Right. And so do you like the fire, fire yeah. department to show up? Please most, to keep your city most safe. Most of our employees yeah. are public safety. Right. And, uh, and so that's one of those challenges. I mean, well, and then not everybody understands that those taxes go to the city, yep. they go to the yep. county, yep. and they go to the school district. Yep. So sometimes the city is the easiest one to complain to, right? Oh yeah, no, yeah. And that's, and that's fair, and we talk yeah. about that. And, I, right. and I've seen some people whose condo developments are just, their values have gone up, they're beautiful, and their senior retirement, right. and the values go, you know, go up 25%. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know what to tell them. Right. Because under state law, I can't give you a break based no. on your you get paid, it's based on what it is. Now, if we cut the thing, it's all reversed, not yeah. in order. Right, right. So we, we, we try very hard to not to keep things under control, but, you know. So the, the budget you'd be working on this year will be some, fairly similar to the last one? Yeah, yeah. I, we've been averaging, I think, you know, the, levy, the levy's always misleading. Right. Because people think, oh, the levy went up how much are you paying? That's yeah. really what I always ask people. Right. And I think our budget last year went up about 2%, uh -huh. two and a half, maybe three. Right. Um, and you know, I expect it's going to be proposed yeah. at the same level because if you give employees a 2% raise. Right. And then if people want to follow this process, uh, they can always look at the last year's budget on your website, right? Yep, yep. And right now, people are getting their evaluations for their right, property. Right, yeah, coming what is in it the mail, worth? right. And this fall is, okay, wh was it worth, plus what are our levy, yep. there's your tax thing. And like you said, it's not just us, but businesses, it's four-way split. Oh, right. The state gets the deposit. So yeah, it's, right. It's, and so it's a four-way split. Uh, so I, I think you know, we have a budget advisory commission uh -huh. that gets to work really more toward late summer because right. uh, there's so many other things that kind of come into play. I think we're all watching the, you know, what's the housing market doing? Oh, right. Um, we're watching the economy has a play. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Lots of factors go we, involved. We endeavor as much as possible to spend other people's money. Right. And so when we go out through transportation dollars, we try to get grants and yeah. money. So. But anybody interested, they can always follow along on yes. your agenda and yep. come, come I, to your meetings. I think in probably April, we'll get kind of our first look okay. at the budget for the fall. And usually through the summer, there's all kinds of other things that start to get plugged oh, in. Oh, right, right. That we'll start to, um, we'll start to get. And it, it is a, like a, almost a year-long process to s carefully analyze what's there and what you want to do. And yeah. it, it's a complicated process, but it's one that you don't rush. Well, and the other part is, is we have a number of our employees are in unions. You bargain oh, right, with unions. right, right, So right. when you set up a two-year agreement that says we'll give it a 2% raise, Guess what? They get two percent right, right. And the other part is, we have a kind of a tradition, Brooklyn Park, that people who aren't in union, we tend to get about the same raise because oh. we don't want them. No, you want to join a new union. Right, so then right. we have what? The the key in getting involved in the city is is it just kind of helps you understand kind of the process mm -hmm. and and understand really really what's on what's involved oh right you know i mean as 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 a resident like we always talked to him and said 
you, know, you get your tax bill and you look at it and you, you know, whether you agree or disagree with what's happening, really if you, if you look at it from, you know, because your bill is the city, it's you know, the school district and the right. county. Right. It's just all not all, yeah, right. it's not right. all the city. Right. So you have to kind of look at the city and as long as you're, as long as you're getting reasonable, reasonably priced services. Right. And, and, and there's value and you're managing, managing all things involved within the city and there's modest or, you know, no, you know, on your tax rate, then, I mean, that's all you can ask from a right. city. Right. And by being involved, you really understand all the facets uh -huh. that that go into, you know, ultimately people judge the city on, you know, when it comes down to your taxes, a lot of it is oh, just, right. you know, what am I paying and what am I getting? Yeah. You know, so by understanding everything that's involved that goes into what that number is, you know, like we've had conversations where you know, from in Osseo, we've actually lowered the tax rate the last five years. Oh, that's pretty unusual yeah and, and you know that's again because the the underlying value of all the real right. estate has gone right. up right so we don't have to tax as much mm -hmm. to get the money right you know and everyone thinks it's a shell game of oh my if you need more money you just raise the valuation and <laughs> it's like well i guess you want your house to be worth more <laughs> than, right. than right. less right you know but if your house stayed the same over the last five years you'd be paying less in tax uh-huh so, but I mean, so, I mean, it's just, I think by being involved, I mean, it's, you truly understand everything that takes to right. run and operate and, and just move the city along through the processes. Because, you know, there's checks and balances and notice periods and things that have to happen that, you, you know, that was, you know, one thing kind of learning uh -huh. going for you know, in the beginning was, try to get all of this stuff done, but you're like, no, you have to have this, have this public hearing and then this oh, notice yes, period right. and this, you know, and cause it's designed to make sure that, you know, you don't kind of go wild. Right, you right. Know? So, I mean, it's, it's understanding the, all the facets that I think mean, is the most kind of important thing to why, you know, somebody should right. get involved. Yes. Now, your, your 29th city budget is getting going. 2019, yep. Right. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the various stages that your council went through during the year to set this budget. Well, uh, it started early last year, and we mm -hmm. have multiple sessions, study sessions, where we look at each individual department, uh -huh. what they want to do, what uh, types of things are they anticipating. Okay. For example, with our public safety, mm -hmm. uh, last year we talked about the use of cameras. And so oh, we had right. to study that, and we had to see what the, the costs of that mm -hmm. are and, and start budgeting that process because a lot of different cities are moving in and, and oh, giving definitely. everyone that camera. So it's, each department has their own interests sure. that we have to consider budgeting for that mm -hmm. this year or maybe a, a, a year to come. And then after that, we coalesce it into a final budget. Uh -huh. uh, we we uh, tell our city manager uh, collectively what what we'd like to see for a, a levy increase, right. which is an increase in the amount of money we're gonna spend. Right. It doesn't necessarily correlate to the increase in your taxes right. because it's divided amongst all the homes and businesses. And when you have a lot of new homes and businesses, uh -huh. makes even if we down. raise right. the levy, you might actually see a decrease right. in your taxes. The, 20, uh, the, the Plymouth uh, portion of your property tax is about 20%. So 20 cents out of your property tax dollar uh -huh. goes to the city of Plymouth. Well, and I always like to make the point that the taxes that you pay on your home go to the city, they go to the county, and they go to the school district, and a few other little small groups. That's so, right. uh, the city and the school district are the ones that kind of people complain to because they're the closest to them. And other groups of government don't have to do that, right? Well, that's right, and yeah. there's a lot of other things. Uh, I'm on the Bassett Creek watershed, uh -huh. so the watershed money comes out of there right. as well. That's right. dedicated to clean the waters. This is the uh, 50th anniversary of the Bassett Creek watershed, uh -huh. so we'll be doing some things and highlighting uh -huh. some of the things that they've done over the last 50 years. But it, but it is important to kind of 
know a little bit about what when you see about levies and taxes and mm -hmm. where you're at and mm -hmm. and there are a couple of opportunities to express yourself absolutely nobody likes the fact that their taxes go up right. especially those who are basically on a fixed oh, budget right right and I don't know what to say to that I mean the city is growing right and we have to basically serve all the mm -hmm. people all these new people right we do our best in Plymouth to try to keep that levy uh -huh. as low as possible which means during that process we'd look at a project or maybe some uh, um, capital assets like uh -huh. some big trucks or trailers right. that maybe we were planning on buying for this year and in order to get the 4.9, we might actually put them off a year oh, sure. and say, okay, do we really need this now? Uh -huh. That's really the big question. Right. In order to keep that 4.9 levy, do we really need this now? And those were the conversations right. we've been having all of last year. Were there any particular areas of your city budget that got increased or decreased? Talking in a general way, not a fire truck in the fire station. Or um, I, I guess a couple of departments got okay. increased. Uh, the fire department. Uh -huh. uh, we uh, are expanding the fire department to add some full-time firefighters. Ah. And we love our part-time firefighters, and we wish we had more of them. We really do. Uh, but we don't. Right. And in order to get our, our times, the time for from when you make the 911 call to when a fire truck actually shows right. up at your door, in order to get those times shorter, we're going to have to have a couple of full-time people to do that. So that really expanded the budget. Oh, sure. Uh, of course, the cameras with the uh, right. police, that's going right. to expand the budget. Our parks department, we have constant requests for new oh, amenities right, and things. Right. So those three uh, areas are probably those though. three areas all uh, have to have some increases. Yeah. And those are the three major areas. Right. So what are you right. going to do? <laughs> yeah. And, and I th that's what I think if people know what it's going for and then say yeah we have we want those kinds of things mm -hmm. and you may want them too to keep up your property values that's kind of part of the value that's right? part of the that's, whole thing that's part of the whole thing right. streets public safety mm -hmm. and parks if you can maintain and improve mm -hmm. those you'll maintain and improve values we already have great school districts right uh, we have four school districts in, oh, the, in the city of Plymouth. I'm in two, Osseo and Robbinsdale. Right. But we also have a little bit of St. Louis Park and Wyzetta. Oh, right, so, right. Uh, but they're all doing very well, yeah. and that's helpful. Oh, it and is for, do, for the valuing of your city for businesses and families to move out. Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes it a quality place to live. Well, it is. It's a good area. And that's kind of our, our tagline, adding quality yeah. to life. If we can just stick with that and add quality to life, We'll do just fine. Right. Just stay in that zone. And so the new bu the budget was approved in December into place, and then you'll be starting on the next one for That's the following right. year. That's right. Isn't that fantastic? So it kind of goes on and on. <clears throat> it really does. It yeah. does revolve. And, you know, after doing it a couple of times, you start to take a little bit closer look at different areas. Oh, right. And uh, uh, we're able to uh, meet consensus ah. pretty well in and our, that's our, important. with our city council. Um, right. We appreciate the fact that on any given item, you know, two people might not want it. But right. if five people too, that's a clear majority. Right. And then once that's voted on, the rest of us just leave it be. So yeah. if we don't win something, it's not a big deal. You don't hold that, uh, right. you know, against right. a future one. It's just we want to thank all of the people that shared their thoughts and our ideas with us. And we do encourage you to take time to follow these issues in your city. And join us again next week.